But after signing Sancho, Varane and Ronaldo coming home this summer to Man United, it's no question that Man United's ambitions and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's aims have to be to win the Premier League and to win the Champions League. Last year, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was very guilty of having a starting eleven that he loved at Man United. Bruno Fernandes and Marcus Rashford by the end of the season were dead. Look, if Jesse Lingard comes in, people might not think he's a starting eleven player, but if he... I don't know, starts against young boys in the Champions League, bangs in two, he should start the Premier League game of the weekend. Play players on form, drop players when they're out of form, not just on the name on the back of their shirt. Manchester United finished second in the Premier League last year, but after signing Sancho, Varane and Ronaldo coming home this summer to Man United, it's no question that Man United's ambitions and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's aims have to be to win the Premier League and to win the Champions League. Now, so many of us don't think that we can do that without a central midfielder. But what if we could? What would need to be fixed with Manchester United this year for us to win that title? What I'm going to do in these videos is highlight the five most important points I think that Solskjaer needs to fix. Problems at the club, problems with his management that need to be resolved if we're going to have any chance of winning the Premier League. Make sure you please watch this video. If you do enjoy the video by the end of it, subscribe, get involved in the United People's TV family. It's a good place to be. But let me run through this list of five things that I think Solskjaer needs to fix this season with Man United. And the first one is so important. And we're going to see whether or not Solskjaer does it in September. And that's rotation. Last year, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was very guilty of having a starting eleven that he loved at Man United. Bruno Fernandes and Marcus Rashford by the end of the season were dead. Harry Maguire, maybe he wouldn't have got that injury before the Europa League final had he been rested a little bit. Now, Solskjaer has got a much stronger second 11. And we've got six games in 18 days in September. Solskjaer needs to rotate players in and out, keep players fresh, because if he doesn't, the players are going to get burned out. Marcus Rashford last season was playing with an injury basically the whole season because we didn't have a second 11. Well, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer didn't have a second 11 that he trusted. That has to change this season. And you can see that with the players that we brought in. Ronaldo goes straight into the starting 11. Varane goes straight into the starting 11. So does Jaden Sancho. So there's players now that can go into that second 11 that should mean we should have a decent enough team that we can rotate in and out. And the quality of the football should not change that much. And Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has to rotate properly this year if we're going to challenge the whole way through to May in Europe and in the Premier League. Crucial. And the second point I think that's really important here, and this is a, a little bit of an extension of, of rotation, but slightly different as well. And that's playing players on form. I think Solskjaer last year was guilty of certain players. They just got into the starting 11. It didn't really matter what they did the game before. Even if they were abysmal, they got into that starting 11. That can't happen this year. There was a real loyalty to certain players last year from Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. And that has to change. McTominay and Fred, for example. Maguire. Well, he played every game anyway. That, that's what I mean. That Shaw was another one. Rashford was another one. Bruno was another one. Just players who played every single game, every single week, every single minute, even if they weren't fit, just out of pure loyalty. That has to change. Solskjaer has to use his squad. You, you're not going to win the Champions League and the Premier League or either of them if you don't use your whole squad. Football is far more about a start than just a starting eleven nowadays. It's important to use your subs at the right time. I'm going to get into that as my next point. But in terms of rotation, that much is obvious. Everybody knows that we need to do that. We need to see that from Solskjaer this year. And for me, just as important as that is playing players on form. Look, if Jesse Lingard comes in, people might not think he's a starting 11 player. But if he, I don't know, starts against young boys in the Champions League, bangs in two, he should start the Premier League game of the weekend. Play players on form. Drop players when they're out of form, not just on the name on the back of their shirt. That's something I don't think Solskjaer did enough last year and we should do more because of the players and what we have signed this summer, improving our overall squad. But they're my first two points. And my third, I think a lot of you are definitely going to agree with this, and that's in-game management. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, look, if we go back to when we beat Spurs and Pochettino at Wembley 1-0, that was in the sort of heyday of Solskjaer's first three months, and he was winning everything. And was like, oh, Solskjaer doesn't know about tactics. And we switched to split strikers. Surprised everyone, we won 1-0. Rashford was clinical with the finish. Solskjaer can change games with his tactics from the start. I want to see Solskjaer changing games with his tactics and his in-game management. One thing I always remember, I don't know why it always sticks with me, when Nani got sent off uh, against us in the Champions League, uh, sorry, for us in the Champions League against Real Madrid, Jose Mourinho immediately put Modric on the pitch. He saw that that was going to be a, a way he could change the game. Modric scored, Real Madrid eventually won. 
That's in-game management, spotting opportunities and spotting problems and changing those problems. I don't want to see United just struggling on after 18 minutes with the same 11 on the pitch when we've got the likes of, I don't know, whether it's Sancho on the bench or Rashford on the bench or anybody. We have got game-changing substitutions inside this squad now. I don't want to just see us waiting and delaying. I want to see Solskjaer being ruthless with his substitutions. If that means a half-time sub, then it means a half-time sub. Depends how badly players are playing. He has to be. He has to have the ability to change games more often from the bench within the 90 minutes. I don't think he's been good enough for that over his the course of his career at Manchester United. It's something he's learned on the job and certainly improving. But that needs to get better if Manchester United really are going to challenge. So for me, they're the first three points. Rotation, playing players on form and in-game management. All three of them are crucial. They all need to be improved. If we're going to improve on that second place, and there's only one place to get to there, and City are going to be tough this year. Chelsea are going to be tough this year. United and Solskjaer, we have to improve in all aspects. These five points in particular. One problem which is definitely going to face Manchester United all year, unfortunately, and that's in midfield. Basically, any setup we have is going to be a compromise, whether that's playing Matomane and Fred, whether that's playing Matic alongside Pogba, whether that's playing Matic alongside Fred, whether that's dropping Donny, Va Donny van der Beek down into midfield. Any setup is a compromise because we didn't sign that central midfielder, that holding midfielder, that top class midfielder to, to complement Pogba and Bruno in a 4-3-3. And if we're going to be playing that double pivot, we have to get that double pivot right. And that might change from game to game. It might change from opposition to opposition. But against Wolves, we saw, was it Matic? No, I don't know who we played against Wolves or Southampton anymore. I don't really care. I think I might have got it out of my head. Matic and Fred have played there. Matic and Pogba, Fred and Pogba. I think it was Fred and Pogba against uh, South Wolves. And I think it was Matic. Ugh. Anyway, that's one point. It's compromises everywhere. Scott McTominay, for me, is probably the, the hinge on which our season in midfield depends. I might even do a separate video on this. But Tomine, for me, is the only midfielder there that has the ability, I think, to have the discipline that we need in that role. Fred can't do it and Matic is too old. And I don't think Donny van der Beek will ever be a number six. So that's a compromise that Solskjaer is going to have to somehow get the most out of. We've got an, a blistering attack. We're going to score, score so many goals this year. And we've got a top-notch defence. So expect plenty of clean sheets as long as they're getting protected by that midfield if we lose the midfield battle too often in the bigger games we're going to become unstuck it's going to be an issue there's no real solution inside this team it's going to be down to Solskjaer and particularly Carrick and Fletcher I've said this before but Solskjaer is a, and is an attacker and our attackers have improved under his management Carrick and Fletcher you're both assistant managers well you're both in the coaching staff at United, you need to improve our midfielders. You need to help them get better and cover the gaps that we have this year. And for me, that's a big problem. The midfield setup. I don't know how Solskjaer solves it, but unless we do, we won't have this title push. I'd love to be proven wrong. I'd love for McTominay to come and shine in that position. I'd love for Fred to even gain some discipline into his game and Matic to refind his purple patch form that he sometimes gets for like three or four games, but over like 20 games. I just don't think any of them are really going to happen. McTominay is the most likely. That's why I'm pinning my hopes on him. But this is a problem that Solskjaer really has to solve if we're going to have any chance of winning the Premier League this year. And of all, look, I've spoken about rotating players. I've spoken about playing players on form. I've spoken about in-game management and I've spoken there about the midfield setup. And point five for me is all around Paul Pogba. I think a lot depends on playing Paul Pogba in his best position. As we saw in the 5-1 against Leeds, where Paul Pogba got four assists, an incredible performance from him when he was allowed to play on the left. On the formation where Rashford was playing, but he, he was more like an inside forward rather than a winger. He tended to drift inside to that space where he operated so well for Juventus. That is Paul Pogba's best position. Or in a 4-3-3 with a holding midfielder and two central midfielders in front of that holding mid. That's where you want Paul Pogba on the left. We saw him drop deep against Southampton and it takes away from Pogba's game. Whatever the midfield setup is, it shouldn't involve dropping Paul Pogba deeper. Yes, he should be good enough to play there. Of course he should. And he is, but he's just not as good as he could be. And to win the Premier League, you need your best players playing in their best positions. We want Bruno in the number 10 role. We want Sancho on the right wing. We want Ronaldo up front. And we want Paul Pogba playing left central midfield. That's where we need to get him. We need to find a system that keeps him in that position. And it's so hard for Paul Pogba to play great one week against Leeds and then play in a completely different position against Southampton. It's not, you, you can't expect consistency when that happens. It's not going to happen. And for us to really have a title push this year, I think we need to make sure we continue to get the best out of Paul Pogba. 
Will he leave in January? I don't know whether he'll leave in January. Maybe that's playing on Solskjaer's mind. But for right now, you've got one of the best central midfielders in the world in Paul Popa. Play him in his best position. Don't try and force him into a midfield too because you've got no other options. You do have other options there. Play Matic and McTominay and Fred. And look, if, if McTominay wasn't injured, maybe he would have started against Southampton. Well, they did come off the bench, which I found a bit weird ahead of Donny van der Beek. But for me, playing Paul Pobbett in his best position is vital for United if we're going to have a title push this year. In the same way, it's vital for every other top player in our squad. Bruno, Ronaldo, Sancho, Greenwood now to play in their prime positions. Paul Popper, it's crucial not to play him in that double pivot. And for me, they're looking at Manchester United's strengths, and we've got plenty of strengths this year. For me, these are the five points I wanted to highlight and speak about. Rotation, that's the most important. Solskjaer has to make sure that this 11, come the start of May, still has the energy and the drive to really put in the sorts of intense performances that can happen under Solskjaer. And it's why we burned out, come towards it, the end of last season, the players were exhausted after coming back from uh, coronavirus lockdown. Playing the players on form. Don't just let a player stay in the team just because he's that player. Everyone should be in that team on merit and merit alone, not the name on the back of their shirt. Unless your name's Cristiano Ronaldo and he's going to play every game. Different rules for Ronaldo. He's the greatest of all time. In-game management, Solskjaer has to change it from the bench more often. He has to. We've got the squad now to influence. We can bring match winners on from the bench. Don't just be sticking with the starting eleven and being stubborn, Ollie. Change the game where you need to change it. And the midfield setup and Paul Popper. It's a huge, it's probably the biggest problem without a, a real solution because as soon as Rashford comes back in and plays on the left, maybe he's going to play there. What happens to Popper then? It, I don't know. There's questions to be asked about plenty this season. But for me, these are the five main points. I think if Solskjaer can find solutions to these problems, I think we can genuinely challenge for the Premier League. I still fear that not having a central midfielder, a central defensive midfielder in the summer that can hold us back. But Hell, we've got enough quality in the squad and make no mistake, because of who we signed this summer in Sancho, Varane and Ronaldo, the pressure will be on Solskjaer now to deliver the title. That will be the ambition of Manchester United this season. We finished second last year and we signed those players. Therefore, we should be getting better. Let's see what happens in the league. But what do you think Man United and Solskjaer need to fix to win the Premier League this year? Do you think we can do it? Do you think it's impossible to do this year? You let me know what you think in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video and you're still here, how you doing? Make sure you subscribe to United People's TV if you are new. But I'll be really interested to see what you think about these five points and whether you agree with me or not. So let me know in the comments.